Hello and welcome. This is Sahara playing Pillars of Eternity, the White March. We are in uh, the Fallen Moon Abbey and I came back to the Halls of Silence because I was in the Halls of Presence and I thought there was a way to go up to the Abbey. Well, I didn't realize we were actually in the top floor of the Abbey. So now I'm down here in the Halls of Silence and we need to go to this, um, the Rising Waterway. See if we can figure this out now. Okay, so we went back up and checked out those panels at the top on the ramparts. So, arrange the panels. So it's going to be the flaming, the flaming, the city in flames goes first. Okay, and then you do the flood, and I knew that the tidal wave was the second one. And then we do the um, ebb is going to be the barren shore. Okay. Grab the panel, slide it into, and locks into place. And then the last one is the flourishing city. Okay. Now let's see what happens. The remaining, the remaining panels retract and lock into place. Behind the heavy stones, there is a metallic groan and then a steady whirl. A small tile about waist high slides back beneath. Slides back. Beneath, there is a carving. It shows an image of an ocean wave curled around a crescent moon. Perform the sign of the tide on the hidden carving. You curl your hand as Kudo described in his journal and position it over the cur carving of the wave. Then, using your other hand, you trace the arc of the crescent with your index and little fingers. A heavy rumble stirs the ground and from all around you comes the sound of rushing water. Okay. So is there something that I'm supposed to get into over here? Can I now, like, swim across that? Hmm, let me go ahead and save. Well, it doesn't look like you can. Oh, you can. Ah, so this is how you get over to that other area, and I bet this is where the key comes in. Oh, come on. Ah, so I hmm. was not done exploring all this area. Sure. All right. Of course, I don't know how much no more problem. there is of this. It doesn't go up much further than this. Unless there is another entryway. Oh. Okay. Embedded in this deep, semi-circular slab is what looks to be a vessel for the sp sprinkling of holy water. In this context, however, it looks more like a lever. There are images engraved on the wall behind it. One of it, one of a rising wave, one of an open gate. Hmm. Okay, so they're each going to do a different function. One, the um, the rising wave, I think, is what's going to kill everybody here. Pour the object toward the open gate. In the distance, you hear the metallic, the mechanical snap of rusted locks and the groan of iron hinges. Okay, what happens? Okay, that let them out. What? Stop them! Our brethren, do not harm them. Echoing voices reach your ears. The words are unintelligible, but you can make out laughter, crying, and cheers. 
Soon after, shouts of alarm resonate in the distance. With a click, the machine releases its hold on the strange rod. You pack the vessel away. So now I'm going to have... Let's hope we don't run into any of them on the way out. So if I would have done the rising tide, it would have killed them all. I have Andra's witness in my possession. It may be what I need to access the reliquary. But where is the reliquary? So... We also know there's that, that guy down here. Who... I don't ever remember seeing the really the really key, whatever it's called. Hmm. Can we we can get in here. But what's in here? Got it. Oh, these are just the sails. That were all locked before. Okay, where is he at? He was up here. He's still here. Did he go? He, he's gone. Can't do anything in any of these rooms. Okay, so where is the reliquary at? Um, you know what I need to access? The reliquary. Hmm. The ritual of sprinkling holy water is one of the most important traditions. This as a bringing takes the traditional shape of a spherical vessel set at the end of a long handle while holes poured into the top of the water to flow onward. When the item is flicked, more uniquely, the shaft has been carved to look as though barnacles cling to it, and the vessel at the end has been made to resemble the moon Garepa. Salt appears to have crusted in long wisps that wind around the object. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. Are we going to run across any while we're going through here? Probably. I'm sure we sh I'm sure we will. I'm surprised we haven't. Yep, they all ran out. Okay. The other one would have killed everybody. And maybe I might redo it, reload this just to see. Um, crested hull, the crested quarters. I 
don't know where it's at. With all the forgotten thoughts. Where would it be? In here? I don't remember seeing anything. Can we... No. Oh. The High Abbot's soul remains close to his body. It radiates a warmth only you can feel. I didn't know, were they out there before? You project your essence outward and when it comes, and when it makes contact, you feel yourself suddenly plummeting through the moments and sensations of another life. You rise, you see beneath you, you see beneath you in a memory glowing brightly and as you pass it, you latch on and pull yourself inside. You walk briskly through a hallway flanked by small gated rooms. It has the feel of a prison but the architecture is consistent with the abbey. Your heart races. You pause at an array of panels, too blurry to read. You rearrange them, and a hidden tile slides back in the wall. In that spot, you make a strange sign with your hands, and the way ahead opens for you. You ascend a flight of steps and take hold of a rod-shaped object attached to a mechanical device and push down on it. You hear the sound of water in the distance. You are falling through memories again but come to a sudden sharp landing outside an enclosure that overlooks the facade of the abbey water flows over an archway like a waterfall without a source okay you are falling through memories again but come to a sudden sharp landing outside an enclosure that overlooks the, fa the facade of the abbey water flows over an archway like a waterfall without a source you look in your hand and the relic you T took from the devices there. You extend it outward, and the water seems to be repelled by it, creating space for you to enter. As you step through the doorway, as you step through, the doorway leads out of the memory entirely. You withdraw in the same direction you came from, flying outward and out of the high abbot's soul. Hmm. I thought I already got this out of here. Obviously, I didn't. Um, so I have to go out on the ramparts, it sounds like to me. And then a facade facing over... Over the Abbey. So where would that be? All right. Come on. Um... Halls of Essence. I a facade that bases out over the Abbey. Is there a way to get on top that we didn't notice before? Okay, so I'm gonna splice this with my other episode. Um, I went ahead and released the prisoners again, and so what I found, I realized, I knew I had seen that name, the Thereliquia, whatever it's called. We never went into it. It's a room. Um, so let's see here. Let's, it's here at the bottom Right down here. I, I guess maybe I tried getting into it and it wouldn't let me in because I didn't have the 
the Andra's witness, whatever, I don't remember, or what, whether we just walked right by it, because I was like, well, let's do some more exploring, and then my mind brain, the way it is, I totally forgot about it. So, hopefully this will take us up to the top of the Abbey, because we know we can get up there. And even when I was looking over my map and I was checking all the different little tags, I still never saw that tag. No. <laughs> okay. Yes, here we are. And there's the waterfall. Okay. And the Veil of Tears. Duh. Quickly and quietly. Thank you for, um... Thank you, Google, for... Let me figure this out. See, and I knew there was a way to get up here. Oh. There's a way to even get over here, too. Okay, what's up over here? You want my crew with me? Or is this as far as it goes? Nope, there's this here. Oh, camping supplies and lockpicks. Always can use the lockpicks. So I think I got as far as I could over here, right? Yep, I did. All right. So here we go. We got this. We have a battle axe. Oh, it was a pole axe and a quarter staff. Okay. So. Yeah. Now. Let's save. Water flows upward from a thin, I'm sorry, from a thin slit that cuts along the tiles of the floor. This water swirls and coalesces when touched, forming an elastic barrier that results, that resists any attempts to cross it. Oh, no problem. But this was where we're supposed to, uh oh. Oh, she had to come with it. Okay. And what's going on over here now? That's just the game showing us where we're supposed to go. Oh, and I got an achievement. A voice from the deep. Okay. Sorry, there's something in my eye. I have my eye in my eye. So we're supposed to be the tide bringer. Exceptional? No, fine. I missed it. Okay, crew, coming up here with me. Yeah. Is this gonna trigger right away? Is there anything up here for me to see? Nope. These are the eyeless, I believe. Yep, it is. The rising tide, updated. Uh, the reliquary appears to contain only a single relic, the skull of an immense being. Somewhere in the enclosure is the means by which Kudo mean, meant, meant to call on the eyeless, to call off the eyeless. Okay. Let's go back over here first. Does this even go anywhere? Uh, Hall of... Well, as this comes down to the Abbey. Okay, this is how you get down into the Abbey. From there. Okay. So you had to do this first to get it to open up in the map down. All right, so let's take a look at this stuff. Um... I knew the Abbey was a secret, but I had no idea. Judging by the distance to the nearby skull, a tremendous force severed this vertebrae from the rest of, the, of its giant body. And what could have done that? The cracks on this jawbone suggest that a forceful blow separated it from its skull. Launched between rows of crystalline rock, a large fragment of metal protrudes. It looks as though it might be possible to pry it loose. All right, let's save first. Uh, 
Am I as far as I can get? No, I do have more up there. What does that say on there? No, my name is covering it. Okay. So pull out the metal fragment. At your touch, the splinter of metal begins to glow orange. Heat surges up your hands and arms and envelops you with such intensity you feel as though you are melting down. The heat spreads to the world around you, turns it orange and then yellow and then white. The ground, the sky, everything around you drips in molten globs and begins to take shape beneath you as if in an invisible mold. You and the shard are the last things to melt and fall, and your addition to the molten pool completes the shape of an immense hammer. The metal cools as quickly as it had heated. The hand... The handle is gripped now by two great leathery hands, and the hammer is cocked back over a shoulder as broad and mottled as a hilltop. Hill troll? The water whirls around and heaves the hammer, and you are flying upward for what seems like ages into the airless blackness above. As you spin, you catch glimpses of a rock large enough to be a moon. It is close, far too close to the world. Hmm... The force of the impact shatters hammer and stone alike. The rock is redirected outward, but a section of the front face is cleaved off and begins to fall, splintering apart at the cracks. In a hundred thousand fragments blossoming outward in all directions, debris showers the atmosphere, trailing smoke and fire. Below, land and sea are far off, but gradually rising up. Look to the sea. The largest of the fragments, white as a city that white as a city barrels downward in a fiery cocoon. Its size reduces as the edges emulate, but it won't burn up in time. It lands silently in the distant ocean, sending a column of water skyward and radiating ripples that spread like wrinkles in fabric. This is like what would kill the planet. Then the sound comes tearing up through the sky. It sounds like thunder. Features are becoming clearer by the moment as you streak toward the earth. You are lodged in an enormous boulder, falling among other smaller fragments that heat and burst around you on all sides. Beneath you, snow-capped mountains rise up, dotted here and there by cities of stone and Audra. The impact will be the destruction of all of them. Yep. The shadow of your rock fragment is visible now, getting larger by the second. You are moments away from striking the ground when a massive shape throws itself into your path. The last thing you hear sounds like another rumbling impact, but that isn't what it is. It's a chuckle, relieved, breathless. You hear two words, made it. Everything goes dark. You open your eyes. The metal hammer fragment has come free, and you now hold it in your hands. It is warm to the touch. The air around you is suddenly turbulent, spiteful a cold damp wind wraps your face salt crystals collecting your nostrils and the creases of your eyes the floor below you becomes a blue gray and glassy churning and rolling and when you fall you crash through water violent waves hurl and spin you something slithers around your ankles seizes you with incredible strength drags you down into salty into silty depths <laughs> Manu this laughs is greedily. Very good. <laughs> when the polling stops, you were hovering at the corner, at the center of an endless blue abyss. You can see neither surface nor floor. You seem to be facing downward, but there is no way to be sure. A voice sounds from everywhere at once, and the immense pressure wave of earth of each utterance sends you reeling. Deceitful wretch! Grave robber! You who dig for that which you did not bury, speak, explain yourself, and be judged. So this is Andra. I seek a means of defeating my an army that threatens my lands. I meant no harm. I came in search of answers. I do, I do only what I must to survive. If I'm to be judged for it, so be it. Who are you calling wretch, wretch? Um, I was looking for the privy. No, I seek a means of defeating an enemy, an army that threatens my land. You seek what is mine, what was rightfully lost. The outburst propels you, sending you end over end. Your actions speak for themselves. The battery opened, the forge ignited. You set free souls that hid from me, that stood. 
stole from me and evaded my judgment. The dwarves sealed their own fate. The forge was meant to be forgotten. Was it really? And now, here you are again, denying peace to the buried. The turbulence around you calms. S silt settles like a slow exhalation in the vast dark seascape beyond the murk bades in. Rays of light trickle down from far above onto green gold columns of kelp that rise from the depths and sway back and forth in the current. Fish and mollusk patrol them in groups of hundreds and thousands. The nearest pass you with watchful eyes. What do you mean the forge is meant to be forgotten? What does it mean? What does it matter if something is remembered or forgotten? It's in the past in either case. What are the bones of one god being sealed in the temple of another? The army that destroyed the dwarves, the Eilis, are they yours? Yeah. What the world casts aside, I take into my care. A thing may be forgotten, but it is never alone as long as I am here. They were lost children, abandoned, fixed on a purpose that no longer had meaning. I took them in, gave them new purpose. I did not create them, but yes, they are mine. What new purposes did you give them? I want to ask you. Okay, they are Abaddon's. I saw them forged. They were his once. I won't deny it. He created them as assistants to carry out his work on Aora. But he has long been the overseer of progress in the world. Leaving things behind has always been his way. I allow him to leave his past in my care. So that it does not hold him back. Uh, you and Abaddon have... A unique connection, then. Um, I had something else to discuss about the Eyeless. You and Abaddon had a unique connection, then. I... I suppose we do. But then, the gods have always been able to accomplish far greater things when working together. Nearby, you see a shark pass through a school of fish. The fish scatter, evading the predator. Mm. I had something else to discuss about the Eyeless. Speak your mind. You haven't given me the whole truth about the Eyeless, have you? Careful what you accuse a god of, mortal. The water around you is suddenly icy. You can feel it sap the heat from your veins. Abaddon didn't abandon these creatures. You made them forget. You made him forget them. Otherwise, he might remember how he died. And what if I did, mortal? It does him no harm to forget. On the contrary, it lifts a burden. If Abaddon remembered, it would threaten the harmony between the gods. It was not so long ago that conflict between us led to disaster in your world, and the death of one of our number. Memory is but an image we create to make sense of the present. It carries no truth or meaning but what we ascribe. A slight alteration to it is a small price to pay for peace. Hmm... I'll take that over another war, I suppose. It's wrong to deceive him. I expected better from a god. If the people of Eora are better off with him not remembering, that's all that matters. Um, well, the gods really are no different than people. Yeah, let's be honest. Memory deceives. It distorts. It reimagines. This is no different. The peace between the gods is already fragile. It will not withstand another shock. Okay. You may ask. What did you mean the forge is meant to be forgotten? It was never meant for mortal use. Such power, such truths lie within it. It can bring only ruin. When the Pargrunin came to the White March, they were peaceful. They shared common beliefs and purpose. Their visions for the forge tore them apart. You have seen this for yourself. Yes, yes I have. They would have destroyed themselves in the end. I do see your point. I mourned the loss of the Pargrunin. Misfortune brought them here. They did not deserve to end so soon. So what does it matter if something is remembered or forgotten? It's in the past in either case. 
Memories are the spirits of the past. You of all people should know their sway on the present, Watcher. Hmm. They are ours to bear whether we care or not. Mm, memory, spirits, don't look at me, I'm perfectly sane. Okay, um... They are ours to bear, whether we care to or not. Perhaps more than I'd care to admit. Mortals measure the worth of their lives in memory. Who will remember me? How long until I am forgotten? That is so true. That is so true. Memory governs every thought informs every choice. It can fuel passion, understanding, love, or it can create obsession, madness. Yeah, and that it can. You have seen it plague many souls in your travels. Consider the old watcher who inherited unspeakable crimes from birth, or the young woman who committed herself to Brackenbury for love of things she remembered she had. Yep. Or the fisherman whose life became a sentence the day he killed his sister. See, she knows everything. Or the Glonfathen boy for whom an old medallion was worth more than all the fruits of his labors. Oh, uh, yeah. They could be free from their burdens, if only they could forget. Their problems go deeper than memory. Simply forgetting does not make them go away. That's true. Their burdens exist for a reason. Why should they be allowed to forget? Their problems go deeper than memory. Simply forgetting. Yep, that's true. For some, perhaps. But for many, the memory is all that remains of it. The light filtering down from the surface seems to focus on... Manila. Would your life not have a better course, Amawa, if the faults of another lifetime were not dragging you down? Um, I was somewhat of a drifter before all this, before I got awakened. I don't know, I think being awakened has put me on a better course. I used to think so. But turning your back on something doesn't make it go away. No, it does not. Just makes it easier for someone to stick a knife in your spine. The source of those wounds is long gone. The memory was all that could do you harm. I would leave my own memories behind if I could, but they haunt me whether or not I remember them. There was value in the memory despite the harm. Responsibility runs deeper than memory. Hmm. I will leave my own memories behind if I could, but they haunt me whether or not I remember them. Yep. Even when problems have run their course, memory can be the stone that sinks you into the abyss. Hmm. Even when problems have run their course, memory can be the stone that sinks you in... I can kind of agree with that too, because it's our memories that we keep remember Even if we rectified something, changed our position, a memory of how we handled it will sometimes sink us back. So I, I kind of agree with that. Bad enough that the past is set. Better that we should not have to dwell upon it. Was there something else, mortal? What are the bones of one god doing sealed in the temple of another? Do not play coy with a god, Watcher. I know you have seen his death. I feel it whenever a forgotten thing is taken from me. Abidin did not deserve to die here. This place, it was the least I could do to give his remains some privacy. So this is Abidin. Hmm. I thought Wall was the only god that was killed. The least you could do? The least I could do for ending his life. Light drains from your surroundings. The kelp Force becomes a cusp of black tendrils, stark and twisted as regret. She killed him. I called the moon down to me, Ioni brother. It was against his wishes. He would not listen to reason, would not listen to me. So it was the moon. In his madness, he splintered the moon. But it was not enough. The greatest of the fragments still fell toward that which he would protect. 
In the end, he took position where it would fall and absorbed the impact himself. Okay, that's how he died. I thought Bellipa and Gun were the moons, but why? I thought, yeah, we're the moons. Yoni brother is their smaller sibling, tiny next to them. So there were three moons instead of two. Small enough that the world would survive its impact. Hmm. But why the temple? Why the secrecy? That time has been forgotten now. And so his death belongs to me. Everything he was before the impact. But you slew another god. Surely the other gods know this. Surely Abaddon must know. Current surges through the kelp bed, pushing each plant sideways like saplings in a hurricane and propelling you backward amidst a torrent of wayward fish. No! He cannot know! He must never know! Understand he was not always as he is now. His body was not all he left behind. Okay, but if you killed him, how could he not know that? He was devoted to progress and industry from the beginning. But so too was he devoted to preservation. In those times, he would let nothing go. Nothing could be forgotten. His will was iron long before his body. Preservation, so that was why he went so far to oppose you. What was it he was trying to preserve? Time has finished much of what I started. I cannot tell you that, mortal, for fear of undoing all its costly work. You make it sound as though you were the sane one. Preservation, so that was why he, he went so far to oppose you. We agreed long ago, all of us, not to alter the course of Kith civilization. Not directly. Not unless there were no other choice. But in this matter, there was no other choice. He understood that as well as anyone. It was for duty that he opposed it. I would have stopped it if I could, but by then it was too late. You make it sound as though you were the sane one. The other gods knew what had to be done, but they lacked the will to go through with it. Even gods have their attachments. But um, the main quest for Pillars of Eternity states there are no gods. None of these are gods. They're just higher beings with power. That's all they are. To erase all knowledge of such a grand thing required unthinkable devastation. The Eastern Reach. Deadfire. Mine was the only solution. When I called down Ioni Brother, they remained silent. Even Abaddon. He knew it was for the best. But he tried to stop it all the same. Perhaps deep down I knew he would. I should have expected it. I could have stopped it. Hmm. I guess I'm not quite understanding the whole gist here. You may ask. You say on one hand you had to call down the moon, yet on the other that you would have stopped it for Abaddon. So why did you pull down the, the small moon? The great conundrum of a god is how close to become with your subjects. Too far and they lose hope. Too close and your own judgment fails. Yeah, I can kind of understand that. Civilizations are meant to ebb and flow. Allow them to persist for too long in power or knowledge, and you invite catastrophe. Yeah, and that's what's happening with our civilization right now. There was a time when we let our sympathies get the better of us. When memories were allowed to persist that should have been washed away. The other gods could not be moved to act. I did what had to be done without them. You were too close to a civilization? Which... Do you speak of? I speak of what is forgotten. I failed that day, but my purpose was achieved in the end. I will not dredge up the memory to satisfy idle curiosity. So you say on one hand you had to call down the small moon, yet on the other that you would have st stopped it for Abaddon. The death of a god is a calamity. You are living in the aftermath of one such death. Surely you can understand. You have said that sympathy can't get in the way. 
What about yours for Abaddon? He deserved better. Of all the other gods, he was the only one who acted, who held to his convictions. The goddess of relentlessness must have appreciated such a quality. I... yes. I admired him for that. But it's more than that. You loved him. The pull and push of the current become long and heavy like a sigh. Whatever he was to me, it was not meant to last. Always our duty is to Aora first. I knew he opposed what I intended. That he would wish to preserve what I meant to destroy. I knew it would cause a rift that might never be mended. But I never imagined he'd go so far. I never imagined it would mean I would never know him as I once did. If he doesn't remember dying, why not begin again with him? Because it might cause him to remember. Um... No, mortal. Better that we should exist as we are now. What happened once must never happen again. Bad enough that I am cursed to remember it. Okay. You may ask. I need you to call off the eyeless. On the contrary, mortal. Their work must continue. Far too much was uncovered while they lay dormant. They draw attention to the very things you wish hidden. In my dreams, I have seen them swarming over the Deerwood. Those who know too much of the White Forge will be washed clean from Aora. And then the eyeless shall rest once more. So that's what they're there for. There isn't some lone tribe of dwarves. This isn't some lone tribe of dwarves. The forge sets, sees visitors from all over now. The eyeless will tear the deerwood apart. It will never be forgotten. The sea life around you stirs back and forth, agitated, restless. Even if it is as you say, there is nothing that can be done. Really? The eyeless do not think for themselves. They have only the purpose that is given to them. They do not stop until the purpose is fulfilled. They will not change course now for me or anyone. I am sorry. Well, Kudo said that he could be that they could be called off. Only if those they pursue are no longer a threat. The raid Sarens were stopped before they could take the White Forge. In your case, Watcher. You are well beyond that now. And if what you say is true, then the Deerwood is as well. This is your doing. You must intervene. The interventions of God seldom work out in anyone's favor. Our touch is too heavy. The world crumbles beneath it. It is why we so often enlist the help of mortals. They execute our wishes with greater care. I have done far too much already. Well, if you won't stop them, then I will. Your determination is commendable. But the eyeless number in the thousands. You will need more than strength or luck. The help of the god will be most welcome. Um, it may, if it, it may cost me my lot, but I will do what I must. This is your mess. You'd better have something to offer. I will sacrifice every life from Stalwart to Katanua if need be. Hmm. The help of the god would be most welcome. I will give you what aid I can. I bade the eyeless to remain hidden when at rest. They are gathered in the hollow of a great rock, splintered from Aeoni Brother. It lies in a flooded crater known as Karen Scar. Okay. Know, too, that they were built to answer the call of their master's hammer. When they hear it strike, they come to its aid. If you were to take that piece of his hammer from here and reshape it in Abaddon's forge into a likeness of the original, you might be able to call them to you. But destroying them would be another matter. Yeah, because they're huge. I know of one way, but only from the center of the lion's den. Only with their master's hammer in your service. If you can do all this, if you can reshape what remains of Abaddon's hammer and bring it inside their lair, I can instruct you there on what you would need to do. 
I will do what I can. And I will see you through when the time comes. Um, I will remake the hammer. And forget this, the eyeless aren't my problem. Someone else can handle it. Um, I will, re well, I will remake the hammer in the white forge and stop the eyeless. If you do not be assured, they will come for you as they did for the Pagrunin. An uneasy dis turbulence disturbs the calm like an unwelcome thought. Careful as you approach the lake. When I claimed the eyeless, I made sure they would not be discovered while they slept. Many of my most devoted followers stand watch there. They will not allow you near. And there is something far worse. Something more fearsome and dangerous than any eyeless. Let us hope you do not attract its attention. Oh, really? More dangerous? <laughs> you can't just add that in there casually. Um, I was just thinking that that sounded too easy. And what is it? In place of an answer, a sudden surge in the current from beneath sends you hurtling upward. The surface above you approaches fast, shifting and glimmering like quicksilver. You emerge, soaking wet, on the stone floor of the reliquy, gasping for breath, as if you'd been holding it for hours. So, atop the Abbey of the Full Moon, I found the reliquy, and the answers I sought. The eyeless are... The army of my dreams. They will destroy me and thousands of others to protect Andra's secrets. Hmm. New quest. Lair of the Eyeless. Re recreate Abaddon's hammer. At the frame of Abaddon's hammer, I retreat from the Abbey. I have enough metal to make a kit-sized version of the original. Okay. The White Forge will enable me to shape the fragment into a likeness of the original. Okay. And this episode is a half an hour, and I'm going to try to splice it with the other one I had before. So, um, no, we're not going to recall her. Anyway, so if you're enjoying, click like, leave a comment, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Sahara out.